Hello, it's Pete from the Make Noise Instagram channel, over here on YouTube to talk about one of my favorite patches from the maths manual, the Arcade Trill. This patch was designed by Tony Rolando for the original maths manual as a way to create modulation patterns that are evocative of the sort of things you'd hear coming out of early arcade cabinets. This is how to patch it up. To begin, set channel 4 to Cycle. And we'll need to use either a mult or a stacking cable to split the gate output from channel 4 to two different places. First up is to the trigger input of channel 1 of maths. And also, another copy of that gate output should be patched to the channel 2 signal input. And we'll patch the channel 2 output to the both CV input on channel 1. A couple of settings to put in place. On channel 4, the manual tells you to set rise and fall both at noon. I find what you actually want to do is set fall kind of closer to 10 o'clock. On channel 2, also set it around 10 o'clock, so a negative version of this gate an inverted copy. And on channel 1, we set rise to noon and fall fully counterclockwise. That's the patch. The last step is to take one of the signal outputs, either the unity out or the attenuverted out, that's the one I'll take, and patch it to the modulation destination of your choice. I'll be using this volt per octave input on a DPO oscillator. For the full arcade experience, I'll take the square out from that DPO oscillator and patch it to the signal input on this Optimix channel. I'll just increase this attenuverter slightly for channel 1. And as I increase the level of our amplifier, we should start hearing an arcade-like sound. Let's give it a listen. There are a couple little modifications I like to make to this patch to make it just a bit more playable. And that also involves using a mult or a stacking cable. I take the gate output from pressure points, and I'll send it to two places. The first to the cycle input on maths, channel 4, which I have taken cycling off of. So now when we press one of these pads, we can see cycling begins, and when we let go, cycling stops. And the other place I'd like to send this voltage is to the CV input on our Optimix channel. So that when we press one of the pads, not only does cycling begin, but the sound comes through. And when we let go, cycling stops and the sound returns to silence. So I'll increase the Optimix level and We'll see what we got. Not bad. There's a couple of controls here in the arcade trail we can use to our advantage. If you're using the attenuverted output, the attenuverter for that channel, for channel 1, acts as a kind of range. So increasing it positively will increase the upward range of the trill. and sending it to a more attenuated amount makes for a smaller range. And then over here on channel 4, the rise control sets a kind of rate for the effect. So more counterclockwise, faster, more clockwise, 
slower. And also if you're using the uh, attenuated output for channel one, if you set it in a negative direction and increase the frequency of your oscillator a little bit, you'll have a downward trajectory of the trill. And the same rules apply as before, depending on how this is set. If it's more counterclockwise, you'll have more of a downward range. And then again, the rise on channel four will act as a kind of rate. As a follow-up patch, here's something I came up with that is not in the manual, but is a riff on the arcade trill patch. And it was inspired by the hang input on function. It effectively turns maths into a track and hold module. This is how you do it. Start with channel four, set cycling on, and I like to set rise and fall so that rise is around noon and falls around nine or 10 o'clock. We're then gonna patch the gate output to one of the center channels. I'll use channel two, completely invert it. So set it fully counterclockwise and then take the output of that channel and patch it to the both CV input on channel one. We'll then send a voltage that we want to process. I'll take a row output for pressure points to the signal input on channel one. Then we'll take the unity output. You can take either output, but we'll take the unity out and send it to the destination of your choice. Like with the arcade trill, I'll use the volt per octave on the second channel of the DPO. And to listen, I'll take the square out just like before and patch it into this Optimix channel. You want to set rise and fall on channel one at noon for both of them. And those are pretty much the settings. The way it's going to work is this gate output, it's going to be high and low. It's going to be oscillating between those two. And the relationship of how long it's high versus how long it's low will change the behavior between sample and hold and track and hold. Sample and hold will be when the output is mostly high, when it's just low for a moment. When it's high, channel one will hold whatever the voltage is until it gets the next pulse. And if it's more low, then it'll pass the voltage through until it's high, and then it'll hold it there like a track and hold. So this is what it sounds like. That toggling you're hearing is an effect of the fall control. So if you hear that, just boost fall up a little bit, turn it up a bit, and that should go away. As you can see, rise here acts as kind of a time as well. So both a clock for the sample and hold and an overall slew amount for the effect, how long it takes to resolve at its final destination. You can patch an LFO in as well instead of just the static voltage. I'll set channel one or oscillator one of the DPO to LFO. I'll take its triangle out. I will attenuate it through channel three. I'll patch that into the channel one signal input. And as I increase channel three, more of that signal will pass through the sample and hold.
I hope this inspires you to dig through the maths manual. Check out the back of it. There's about 40 different patches to try, and each one of them offers a new avenue into better understanding of maths and how to integrate it into your own patching style. Thanks, and happy patching. Mm-hmm.